Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for participating in Dwight Hall's Alumni and Mentorship Career Development Task Force event. I'm Alvaro. I'm one of the outreach coordinators for Dwight Hall's Student Executive Committee and a member of this task force. And I just want to wish you all a, a big thank you for coming out to this event today. It really means a lot. And a big part of our mission is nurturing and inspiring students as leaders for social change. And the purpose of the Alumni Mentorship and Career Development Task Force is to make Dwight Hall a hub for information, mentorship, and networking for current students and alumni interested in public um, service, social justice, and related careers. Um, before we continue on, I just want to, um, as we gather here online today, I'd like to take a moment to consider the legacy of colonization in our technology systems um, and society today. We benefit today from the equipment and connectivity not available to many indigenous communities and technologies whose carbon footprint may contribute to our changing climate and that disproportionately affect indigenous people worldwide. And since we are broadcasting from Dwight Hall, which is situated um, on old campus, we'd like to acknowledge um, the indigenous people and nations, um, including Mohegan, um, Mashantuck Pequot, Eastern Pequot, Scaticoke, Golden Hill, um, Pogues, um, Pogueset, Nahantic, um, Quinnipiac, and the um, and other Algonquin people, speaking people that are steward on these generations and lands and waterways of which we now, the state of Connecticut, um, sit on. And we honor and respect the enduring relationship that exists between these people and the nations on this land. But tonight we'll be covering a lot of information regarding public service fellowships for both undergraduate and postgraduate um, opportunities. We'll hear from Mark Dwight Hall's um, Director of Programming and Evaluation about what he looks for in a fellowship application. Robin from Office of Career Strategy with information about how to access fellowships and get career advice. And Lindsay from the Fellowship Office to get more information um, on the fellowship application timelines. And there will be time for questions at the end, but please feel free to use the um, chat box in the function to ask questions throughout the event. And I will now turn it over to Hannah, who will share some resources um, about available postgraduate fellowships and to continue to introduce the event. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Hannah. I use she, her pronouns, and I am a student involved um, in many capacities at Dwight Hall. Um, I dropped actually the document that I wanted to share with you all in the chat. And I didn't know that it would send automatically. So it is already there waiting for you. Um, this is made possible by the fellowships office and it just has some public service um, fellowships that Lindsay will talk about more later. Um, as Alvaro said, thank you so much for coming to this event. We hope that it will be useful to you and um, definitely use the chat throughout the event. I'm sure that our presenters will ask for questions as well, um, but we definitely want this to be useful to you. So feel free to um, participate in that dialogue and all of that. Um, without further ado, I'm going to pass it over to Robin, um, who's going to give us some information um, about OCS and the resources that they offer when it comes to fellowship application. Thanks, Hannah. So um, as Hannah mentioned, I work in Office of Career Strategy. I'm the Director of Public Service Careers and Strategic Initiatives. I go by she, her pronouns. And today I'm excited to talk to students about some different opportunities within um, OCS uh, in regards to funding for both seniors and for uh, first years through juniors. So I'm going to briefly touch on what Common Good and Creative Careers is. Uh, then I'll be mentioning the top OCS resource because I feel like it's just helpful for every student to know about. Um, and then be talking specifically about some funding resources for graduating seniors and then moving on, um, as I mentioned, to first years through juniors. So Common Good and Creative Careers, um, what is it? It is an initiative out of offices, Office of Career Strategy. And essentially our goal is to make sure that students like all of you who are interested in the industry career paths such as nonprofit, as government, education, as well as the arts and communications, um, that you're aware of all the resources that OCS has to offer you. Uh, so, you know, in terms of, of what we do, we have over 100 programs a year that we put on workshops, a lot of co-sponsored stuff such as this. Um, there are a lot of students who go into these areas and I don't know if, if students are always aware of that, right? So um, sometimes I hear from students that say, gosh, it seems like nobody else is looking into these areas. Well, I'm here to tell you that for summer internships, um, 50 to 55% of students are going into common good and creative career industries. And for after graduation, uh, we have statistics that show every year it's between 35 and 40% of our graduates go into this area. Um, we offer personalized advising in that area. So certainly you can come to OCS and talk to one of us about whatever the areas that you're interested in. We have career fairs, we've got information sessions with employers. We had the CIA just the other day, uh, just for example, um, we had one on uh, 
CDFIs on Monday afternoon, I think it was. Um, one of the things I want to make sure that students know about with Common Good and Creative Careers is that we do have, OCS has a new website and you can customize your website. So when you go to ocs.yale.edu, it says right on the front, customize your web, um, your website and customize your newsletter. Sorry, that's what I meant, newsletter. So we have a newsletter that goes out every Monday morning. And if you take the time to customize it, then you can be sure to get specific information on the industries you're interested in. So I would strongly encourage you to just take, it takes literally two minutes to go in and do that. Um, you'll find out about job postings and events that are relevant to your specific search. So my top OCS resource, want to just mention this, is the peer networking list. Um, the peer networking lists are uh, basically giant Excel spreadsheets, and they you are able to filter by a ton of stuff, by class year, by employer name, by job function, by industry, and they show where students have gone for both their summers and where they go after graduation. They're all located in Yale Career Link, which is where you also make appointments uh, with OCS advisors. And um, they're under the resources and career library section. So again, as Hannah mentioned, you can ask questions throughout. I'm happy to answer questions about this at the end, but they go back to summer 2018. And a lot of students find them helpful just to find out like what other students have done for summers. You know, what's realistic for me as a first year, I wanna go into, you know, I wanna work in advocacy. Let me see what other students have done. Um, and all, this, all the former students who are in there have said, yes, you can reach out to me and ask questions. So it's just a great resource that I like to remind all students about. In terms of funding for um, seniors, uh, Lindsay is going to be talking a lot about stuff from the Office of Fellowships point of view, which is great in terms of the Yale fellowships. I did wanna mention that OCS has a list specifically of the non-Yale fellowships, um, not all of them, but we do have some robust lists on our website. So if you go to ocs.yale.edu, and then you just go to communities and it's right here, you go to gap year and short term. Um, we have these lists of fellowships in different categories that I think a lot of students who are involved with Dwight Hall would be interested in. So you can go to nonprofit leadership fellowships, environment fellowships, as you can see, there's a long list here. And when you click on that, you're gonna see a bunch of sample postgraduate fellowships that you could apply for. Again, they're not Yale fellowships, they're in, you know external ones with very like a variety of organizations. So that was one resource I want to make sure that our seniors know about. Um, we are also having a talk next Tuesday at 4.30, so December 7th, Fellowships are part of your career journey. Um, this is going to have somebody from the Alaska Fellows Program who always gets a lot of Yaleys. Um, there's also someone from ClearPath, so talking about a policy fellowship, and then Project Horseshoe Farm. Um, so that'll be a panel discussion, and you all are welcome to join that. Just wanted to let you know about that. Another important resource for our seniors that I just want to make sure you, you know about is we have something that in the past was really called the travel reimbursement program, where any senior that is looking to do an interview in government, in nonprofit, or anything in the arts, they could get reimbursed for their travel up to $200. And um, it's not like you apply for it, you just have to submit your receipts and you can get that reimbursement. However, because of what's happened with the pandemic, most students do not need to travel to interviews. So we do have this additional um, piece here, component. It's the other career related engagements. And so if you are looking, for example, um, like if you wanna attend a professional conference, if you have like professional association you wanna become a member of, there's a lot of subscription fees for like specific industry job boards, you can also use this $200 for that. So if you have questions on that, uh, obviously you can come to me, but also ocs.yale.edu. And if you just put in travel reimbursement, it outlines the steps to get reimbursed on that. So in regards to the summer funding, we have, um, OCS has some funded internships that I wanna mention. The, these fellowships for the most part, they have not opened yet. So the timing of this is perfect. Uh, because now you can be aware of it and look for it. And what I've outlined here is the name of the particular funded internship, and then whether it's in Yale Career Link or whether it's in the Students Grants Database. So I know Lindsay will be talking more about Students Grants Database, or as we lovingly call it, SGDB. Um, but in addition, Yale Career Link has some of these. So 
Just to review like the high points of a few of these, I would keep your eyes out for the Yale Alumni Community Service Internship. Those are funded internships that are going to be across the United States. They are specific positions. So you're not proposing um, like a fellowship that you are, you know, you have the idea for. It's, it's an actual position, but it's funded. The funding actually comes from Yale clubs across the United States. So they raise the funds in their city. So for example, Yale Club of New York has some, where actually for Yale Club of New York, you actually get to stay at the Club of New York um, for the internship, which is pretty cool. Um, there's Yale Club of Minnesota. So it really runs the gamut in terms of locations, but those are gonna start being posted in Yale Career Link starting in December. Those um, are for first years through juniors and the stipends vary. So um, I think the lowest one might be 2,500 or 3,000 and some go up to 6,000. So it's gonna be specific on the position and basically the Yale club in that location that's funding it, they decide which nonprofits they want to support and have a Yaley apply for. Uh, Yaki Community Service Fellowship. That one is in Students Grants Database because it is one where you actually propose the uh, fellowship and what you would be doing in the nonprofit you would be working for. So that one is opening in early December and the deadline is March 4th. The nonprofit needs to be in the New England area and has to be a 501c3. So um, that's certainly one to look into. Again, Students Grants Database. Women in Government is another one. That, fellow, that fellowship is open to all Yale College students, um, regardless of gender. It is in the Students Grants Database. And that one is for students who are looking to work um, with particularly government officials, working in politics. It includes a component where you actually go to the, um, the school, the campaign school. So that's an interesting like component for that. For those who are interested in policy work, I would definitely look into that. It's open early, actually that one just opened and that one's also due March 4th. Okay, so the Yaki and the Women in Government are the only two that are in Students Grants Database. Those two will need recommendation letters. The rest do not because they're actually funded positions where you're applying in Yale Career Link, but the, but the position has been funded by some donor. Um, Paul Block Journalism Internship, if you're interested in journalism, it's a great one to look into. Uh, they have both a fall and a spring opening, and that one is at $5,000 stipend with a few um, specific publications. And the Buckley Media and Public Policy Internships, that one is also going to be between four and 5,000 and it's opening in December. Um, the LA Arts Internship is a really interesting one. That's with, um, it rotates which organizations, it's with, with, with like the American Contemporary Ballet, as well as an organization called LACMA. Um, and that one is at $5,500 and will also open in December. And then Yale and Hollywood is not a funded internship, but I like to mention it here because it is through Yale Career Link and students can look for um, in opportunities in entertainment there. So all of these are at the website below. Um, happy to answer any questions about them at the end. The last thing I wanted to mention was the Summer Experience Award. So the, oh, the funded internships I was just speaking about, those are competitive fellowships or funded internships where you apply and there's, you know, it's competitive, they're selecting um, a specific number. The Summer Experience Award is different. So Summer Experience Award is for students who are on financial aid um, it, in their first year, sophomore or junior year, you can be on 1% financial aid or you can be on 100% financial aid. But as long as you're on some percentage of financial aid, then as we call it, the SEA is, it's really part of your financial aid package. So um, what you can do with that is you can apply to, um, for one of your summers to either do a US-based experience or an international experience. So how it works is you are, you secure the position first and then you apply for this funding, but it is not a competitive fellowship. In other words, as long as you meet these guidelines, you will get the funding. And I think that's a very important point because that's different than many of the other awards that we talk about. Um, the US base, as you can see here, it's $4,000. Um, so you secure the position, it's with an unpaid or underfunded, which at this point is $1,500 or less, uh, summer opportunity with either a nonprofit, a government entity, um, an NGO, arts apprenticeship, or it can be science lab or research. And for international experience, it's the same thing, except you get $6,000. Um, and you can also work for for-profit for the international experience, as long as it's still unpaid or underfunded. 
the applications have recently opened and it closes May 1st. So again, the reason the deadline is so late is, is in order to allow you to actually secure the position and then you get the funding. So um, you can only use this once during your time at Yale. So it's gotta be either your first year sophomore or junior summer. Um, for our super seniors, you can actually do it if you have an extra summer there too. And like I said, the position has to be secured. It's gotta be unpaid or underfunded. It does need to be uh, at least 30 hours a week that you're working and at least eight weeks in length. That's all gonna be uh, through Yale Career Link as well. So you apply through there. There's a ton of details. Um, there's an FAQ if you have questions, it's ocs.yale.edu forward slash SEA. And again, you know, I am here, I'm at Office of Career Strategy. I'm happy to speak to anybody about their you know, questions throughout this. And I am now gonna turn things over to Mark, who's gonna give us tips on your application, making your application great. Everybody, thanks for, for joining. And uh, Hannah and Alvaro, thanks for the introduction. Um, I will reintroduce myself. My name is Mark, last name Fopiano. I use he, him, his pronouns. Um, and I work for Dwight Hall as the Director of Programming and Evaluation. Uh, and I'm here to talk about tips for a successful application. Um, I think one of the reasons that I that I am doing this is Dwight Hall has our Dwight Hall Summer Fellows Program. It goes back to 1968, and I've been working uh, with that program for a long time. And I've also been a reviewer for public, public service fellowships with CIP in years past. Uh, so I've been in a few of these conversations before. So, so inside of here is, is some of the tips for successful applications. Um, and more than anything else, I, I would just really stress to people to give yourself some time to talk to folks and uh, to not worry too much. That, that's really like, uh, I'll go into the details, but those are the, the quick hits is give yourself time talk to folks and then and then just don't worry about it too much um but put, put your best foot forward a good place to start um is always establishing a timeline you might be eligible or your project or your interests might be um eligible for different fellowships but they might have different timelines so just be aware of what the different deadlines are uh, and know kind of when you need to get things done uh, ahead of time. A good place to become organized is at this link, um, which I'll drop into the chat. There, it's just a, a very good overview of how, how to start, how to kind of start thinking about it. Oh, I already see it in there. Uh, perfect, thank you. Uh, and then one other thing when establishing a timeline is just to make sure that, uh, you know, understand what your recommendations are and just make sure to give extra time to recommenders. Um, I think that as somebody that has both read and written recommendations, it's it's you can tell when when people put their best foot forward and making sure that people have uh, time and information is, is always helpful. After you've established a timeline and you're looking into a specific fellowship, do your research. I think that that's why a lot of people are actually here tonight, um, is learning about what's out there and, and where can you start and, and how can you become organized. When you find a specific one, um, try to dig into it as much as you can. Uh, who funds it? What are the goals of it? Um, I So I've never actually looked at the, the OCS peer network. Robin, I'm not sure that we've talked about that before. Super interested to hear people's uh, experiences, because that sounds amazing that you can tap into um, other people that have applied for and are willing to talk to you. I would absolutely be, uh, if you're not sure, uh, I'd be reaching out to previous applicants. Uh, I did throw in here successful or unsuccessful. You might need to know the person uh, if <laughs> to know that they were unsuccessful at receiving an application, but I think that people on both sides of, of that coin probably have an opinion about well, what went right or what didn't go, uh, go right for them. Um, obviously, you, you'll want to know who administers the fellowship, and that's something to pay attention to. So uh, a good example is kind of Yale Career Link versus uh, um, Students Grants Database. Those are different systems. Uh, so who, who works with those things? Can you sit down and talk to them? Uh, I, I'm speaking for Robin and Lindsay when I say, like, we're always happy to talk to students. Like, I mean, we try to make it uh, 
as inviting and, and warm as possible. Uh, but we'd love talking to students coming in that have questions. Um, so take advantage of the people and resources and things that are that are out there. Another thing, and I mentioned this a little bit earlier, uh, pay attention to recommendations. Um, what's the purpose of them? How many do you need? You might need one, you might need three, they might need to speak to character, they might need to speak to project. Just pay attention to, to what is being asked uh, from a recommendation standpoint. And I'm mentioning all of this to, this is before you actually do any writing, just kind of you know read and reread the things that, um, that you're then being asked to do. So uh, read, reread the application. So what are the prompts? What are the, what are the different responses that, that you need um, to, to provide. You might want to ask yourself, are you a good fit for this? Uh, one thing that I look for as a reviewer is are, um, are people providing explicit detail uh, where it's appropriate to do so? Uh, so do you have an appropriate budget and have you researched you know, travel costs, uh, things like this? Uh, pay attention to what those things are in, in still in your, your reading phase. What are they really looking for you to, to get out of this? Um, it's also important to know what is this not support? So uh, Dwight Hall's Summer Fellows Program, uh, there's, there's um, we might be looking for uh, different things like uh, a preference for staying in New Haven or being somewhere else. Uh, is there anything that this fellowship does not support explicitly? And then uh, obviously you always want to think about, does this work for what you want to get done? If, if you have a project that you're uh, proposing and a fellowship that you really want to get, um, how does this work for your uh, immediate or long-term goals? Um, so something that, that um, we always should have in fellowships is selection criteria. Uh, this is a, a selection of, from Dwight Hall's website for, uh, uh, for summer guidance. Um, these are the things that we look for. This is in, in question form one through four, and we'll ask our reviewers to score these things. Um, and, and this is um, what you want to convey. Uh, so we try to put out there, what, what are people going to be grading you on? Uh, what is that selection criteria look like? Uh, so all this again is, is things that you want to be aware of as you go into your, your writing and proofreading process. Uh, I'm also very aware that fellowship applications ask you really unfair questions like what do you want to do with the rest of your life? Uh, sometimes it's, a, it's okay to not know. Um, it, you should have an idea of how this fellowship will help get you to that next step. Um, but it can be really challenging to sit down and say, well, how is this going to you know, shape the, everything that I'll do from this moment forward? Don't worry about it quite so much. Um, you do want to have an idea of, of what you want to, why am I applying to this thing? How will it fit into my life right now? What has prepared me for it? All of those are important, but it can be a little bit unfair to really sit back and say, all right, well, what do I want to do? Um, don't worry about it too much. Just remember that when you do it, uh, you want to answer the questions that are being asked uh, and you want to stay within that prompt. So uh, something that we might ask is in our selection criteria, we'll say, uh, what have you done in the past that has prepared you for this type of opportunity? Talk about the things that, it, that you've done that have prepared you, not don't launch into exactly uh, like why this is a great opportunity in that prompt. Just remember that, you're, that you wanna answer the question that's being asked, you wanna take time, you wanna be thoughtful, you wanna be honest. Uh, I would recommend to try to be consistent across uh, as many responses. Uh, is there a consistent thread about why this person wants to work with, uh, you know, their hometown or with homeless services or why they might want to experience working within homeless services in a different place than they've done before? Um, being able to show why this thing is important and why you're passionate about uh, working on that is, is a, a great example. I, I would recommend that people do pay attention to grammar and spelling. Um, it does become like, as you read through these things, it does become um, obvious how much uh, sort of care you've put into your application. Uh, after you've drafted and proofread your, your application, try to walk away from it for a little bit. Uh, I, I just said, let it rest. 
Uh, try not to rush, uh, walk away, make sure that your answers kind of uh, sit with you the way that you want them to. Um, before you hit submit, maybe you wanna go back and review some of the research that you did um, uh, and just make sure that, that, um, that you're understanding the goals, how you fit into those things. Um, reread your application as if you were as if you were a reviewer. And then if possible, I always think that it's a good idea to ask other people to read it too, um, so that you get as many opinions that come back to you as possible. And then when you're ready, uh, go ahead and submit with confidence um, and move on to that next deadline. Don't worry about this one too, too much. Um, so that's my, my quick spiel uh, and my quick tips. Um, but again, I, I think the big things to get out of this is, uh, you know, establish your, your, your timeline, uh, make sure that you talk to folks, take advantage of the resources that are available from whatever office those might be, uh, and then don't worry about it too, too much. Uh, I am going to pass it over to Lindsay. Uh, I am also, I didn't see any questions come up in the chat. If there are any, go ahead and, and, and drop them in there. Um, and also, I think that we'll have some time at the end too. All right. So my name is Lindsay Lawton. I'm Senior Associate Director in the Fellowships Office. Um, and I am here to tell you a little bit more about the resources available to help you apply for fellowships and also some of the fellowships for you to be thinking about to support your pursuit of public service. But the, the main point here is that we want you to use the resources available to you and for you to be thinking carefully about what all of those resources are. One of the most amazing things and also one of the most challenging things at Yale is that there is such an enormous amount of information available to you. And that is true of fellowships just like anything else. There's a ton of information about it. These are the two resources I recommend beginning with. The first one is the Yale Student Grants database. You can get there by going to studentgrants.yale.edu. And in, in a minute, I think I'm gonna show you on that site a little bit about how to work it. But what I want to make sure you understand about the Yale Student Grants database is that it's limited. The, there are hundreds of awards in that database, but those are only awards that are funded by Yale or that have a Yale nomination or endorsement component. So there are dozens, probably hundreds of other awards that are not in our database, but that can also support public service activities. And those are things for you to be aware of as well, but it can be overwhelming. So start with the Student Grants Database. The Yale resources available to support, for example, summer experiences are um, pretty remarkable. There's a lot in there. So you wanna start by using the filters to find the right fit and you can sort it by the deadline date. It's automatically in alphabetical order. And I worked at Yale for a month before I realized that you could sort it by deadline date. And that's so much more helpful because then you can see what has passed, what is coming soon, and will help you get your timeline organized like Mark was suggesting. So the other thing that I really wanna stress here about the Student Grants Database is that because of administrative stuff, complicated payment systems that you don't wanna know anything about, we need to have deadlines before you will reasonably know whether you have an internship for the summer secured. This is so stressful for students every year. And I worry that students miss out on funding opportunities because they're waiting to hear back from an internship before they submit an application. Please don't wait, do me a favor and apply for funding even if the fellowship has not been secured because that way you might win the money and get the position and it's all gonna work out. But if you wait until after the deadline for the funding has passed, even if you get the internship, for example, the funding for that may be gone. Um, so if you wanna talk with an advisor about a strategy for how to pitch an internship or some other experience that's not quite pinned down by the deadline, which is gonna be in February for a lot of these, you can still have a really successful application. You just wanna be thoughtful about how you're putting all of these pieces together. I've listed a couple of applications here that you might wanna keep an eye out for. Um, these are some of the like top hits, but I'm actually going to show you in the, because I have the power to share my screen, I'm gonna share um, the database itself. And we're gonna to look together 
So this is the Yale Student Grants database. A lot of students will start by typing in public service as a keyword. That's not gonna be the most effective search. What you wanna do is instead use these filters here and you can put in your current year of study, but I know a lot of students are a semester off from their original class year or even a year off. And so don't, I usually don't worry too much about this. Most of the Yale awards are not restricted to a particular class year, but you do wanna specify the term of the award if you're looking for summer funding. And then if you wanna look for a particular purpose, if you know you are going to be doing some sort of community service, for example, you can choose that as the purpose. And I would honestly just leave it there. If you use too many filters, the database gets confused, I think. So if you just filter out for those, you see it produces this list of 41 different awards and you can sort these, like I said, way up here, sort these by deadline date and you can see what to start worrying about first. Like the Lyman Summer Fellowship for Yale College students has a January 28th deadline. Good that we're talking now, isn't it? That's gonna be here before you know it. So that's the, the Yale Student Grants database. While we're here, I'm also gonna just quickly show you our website. This is the fellowships office website. And Mark referenced this earlier. This is one of those places where there's just an enormous amount of information, just tons of stuff here, but you can find all kinds of things. Like if you took a leave of absence, how is that going to affect your eligibility? You can find the flyers, you can find um, under applying, we have all kinds of useful tips. How to apply leads you to really like step-by-step, step. there's advice about writing your proposal, about drafting your budget, all of the people pieces of fellowship application. So make use of these resources, these information resources that are available to you. So that said, it's not just the information. Having the information alone isn't going to help you pull this together. The other thing that you have, because you're here now, it's December 1st, you have time, which is a weird thing for a Yaley to believe, I think. We're all very busy people, but you have some time. And so we encourage you to spend some time, particularly over winter break, just browsing awards, just spend some time reading through what's even out there. Did you ever think that maybe you wanted to do some archival research? There's an award for that. Um, maybe you wanna do something that's got music involved in it. There's an award that is music and service. So browse the awards that are out there and see if that sparks some ideas for you, but also be paying attention to what are you eligible for and what is a good fit for the stuff that is gonna help you move forward, right? Brainstorm a lot, talk to people, not just to your mentors, not just to your advisor, talk to your peers, talk to alumni. I'm really also excited to find out more about your experiences with this alumni list project with OCS but also start having conversations with people who might be recommenders. You don't need to know for sure that they're recommenders yet, but it really helps if you start the conversation now about what you're considering doing. It gives you a chance to take their temperature and see, are they supportive? If you say, yeah, I was going to go, um, I'm just gonna keep going to this archival research example. I know it's not a great fit, <laughs> fit for everyone, but it's pretty, uh, pretty common. Um, at Yale, I'm gonna go do archival research. And this mentor that you're talking with says, that's a terrible idea. Why would you do that? What a terrible waste of your time. Shouldn't you be doing campaign work somewhere? Then you know that that person is not a good fit for a recommendation, even if you really get along with them and think they're great. So talk with them about what you're up to. They also have ideas. They have connections and they have perspective on kind of career development that you just don't have yet. And so they might throw out an idea that will actually send you pursuing a slightly different thing than you otherwise would and helping you be really successful at it. So having those conversations early is great. The other thing is that if you are thinking of asking someone for a recommendation, time is on your side right now. It won't be when you come back in the spring. So if you can have conversations, at least the preliminary conversations with potential recommenders, before you leave campus this fall, it will really help you 
when it's January and you're racing through classes and you're connecting with all of your friends and it's also snowing and you're busy again, right? You just want to make sure that you take the time to have conversations with potential recommenders early. We suggest at least three weeks, six weeks, if you can manage it, of lead time before a recommendation is due. A conversation is going to be better than an email if you can arrange that. And if you're nervous about this, a lot of students are nervous about having the actual conversation. Practice, write a script, think about how you can frame this in a way that will give them a graceful way to decline. If they're too busy, if they don't think that they're going to be able to support you, you wanna give them that out, but then you also wanna trust them to say no. A lot of students also feel like they're imposing when they're requesting that someone writes a letter for them. You have to trust your mentors, you have to trust your supporters, to turn you down if they don't have time, if they can't do a good job. So we always practice scripts in our office. If you wanna practice with one of us, we're happy to help with that. Um, but think about how you can get that ball rolling sooner rather than later. Then just like Mark said, take the time to draft something and set it aside and then come back to it and then revise it and draft a new thing and take the time. You have the luxury of time right now to be developing a plan A but also a plan B, C, and several other letters of the alphabet. Um, because as you all are very aware, I think, we don't know what's going to be possible and we don't want you to pin all of your hopes on a particular, for example, international experience that might not be possible come May. So the other resource that you have here at Yale is just an enormous amount of support. There are a lot of people who are here and really excited to help you figure this stuff out. Of course, our office, um, the fellowships office is here to help you look through the database, help you figure out what is a good fit for your particular goals and pursuits. And this isn't just for students who are looking for summer funding. We also work with students who are looking at postgraduate awards. Fulbright can be a great opportunity for service upper, for service work abroad, depending on how you frame it and depending on where you wanna go. If you're interested in doing a master's degree that will help you be more effective in a public service role, there's funding for that. We can help you figure out how to pursue the right number of awards too for the things that you wanna do. Sometimes people get so caught up in this that they're applying for everything and not taking the time to think through what's really gonna be the best use of their time. So we're here to help you with that. We have quick question appointments. If you just wanna talk for 10, 15 minutes with somebody, we've got those. We also have 30 minute individual advising appointments in person or over Zoom. And we also have outreach coordinators who are happy to meet with you. If you, if you find it a little daunting to meet with me, I hope not, but if you do, or if you wanna just start by talking with a peer, we have outreach coordinators. Um, one of them is on this call, I believe. Alif is here somewhere. And you can set up a time to meet with them and just chat in a low stakes situation about how to get started with a fellowships application. Um, also a great resource at Yale are the writing partners and tutors. We encourage you to go to the writing partners and the writing tutors to get help with polishing your applications, making sure that you're communicating your points effectively in writing and also to help you when you've looked at it so much that it's making your eyes bleed, they can take a pass at it and make sure you didn't miss a comma or something. Um, academic strategies also does a lot of work helping students figure out, especially with summer funding. They have a whole series of imagining your summers, summer workshops. The next one is December 2nd, that's tomorrow. Um, so keep an eye out for those. And then there are other events that we have throughout the year, but especially right now and into January and February, we have events to help people start thinking, especially about summer stuff. Um, so on December 8th, there's going to be a panel with First Gen Yale about summer funding that might be of interest to some of you. There's also a proposal writing workshop. If you already have an idea and you already know this is what I want to do, it's not too soon to start drafting. So come to our proposal writing workshop on December 13th. All of that said though, I just, I just have to caution you. Procrastination is real. And sometimes making sure you know every single resource and that you've tried every single resource and you've met with 
all of the potential advisors and recommenders and read through all of the possible fellowship descriptions, that can be a way to put off the hard decision about what you're going to pursue. Or even a hard conversation with yourself about what even is interesting for you right now. Where is your, where is your ambition at the moment? It might be different than what it was a year ago and that's okay, but it can be tough to realize that when you're in the middle of a fellowships application. Um, so get organized, make a timeline. If you can find a buddy, find somebody else. There's a, maybe somebody else on this call who's also going to be pursuing a summer opportunity, a summer fellowship or a postgraduate award. And they can be there when you're rolling your eyes at how dense our website is or something. Um, they can help keep you accountable and you can help them. And finally, I hope that you will, as you're pursuing all of the all of the funding and opportunities that you'll think about how the process can be helpful to you, even if you don't win the money or get the position, there are benefits to you for trying. And that can be stronger relationships with your mentors and recommenders that can be polished writing that you'll be able to use for other things in the future. That can just be a clearer sense of what you're actually after. But if you think about that as you're going through this, generally you will find your applications are stronger and the process is a lot more pleasant. So with that, I'm going to turn it back over to Hannah. Um, I think we have a little bit of time now for, for questions. Yes, thank you so much, Lindsay, and thank you, um, Robin and Mark, as well. Um, if you have questions, feel free to raise your hand, just like Raymond has done, um, or you can also put them in the chat. Um, and if you want to direct it towards a different, like towards a particular person, just let us know. Raymond, I'll let you go ahead and ask your question. Hi, thank you so much. Uh, my question was just, how do we um, find out and apply for fellowships that are not in the database? Great question, Raymond. We have some lists on the fellowships website of kind of the top hits for external awards. Robin showed earlier some lists that the Office for Career Strategy has for a lot of fellowships as well. I think that what is generally most effective though, because there are so many things out there, is to meet with an advisor and talk about your individual goals and interests. And we often will know, oh, that seems like a good fit for this particular thing. Or, boy, you know, there are a couple of awards over here that might, that might help you get to where you're trying to go. Generally, don't just Google it. <laughs> Stay away from Reddit. It's not going to help you. Got it. Thanks so much. Yeah. Um, can I just mention something that yes, I did not, uh, that I forgot to say? The, the piece about remote work um, and what that looks like for this summer, because I know that a lot of organizations are moving towards remote work. So I, I know that for the Summer Experience Award, um, we are open to the position being remote for summer 2022. So wanted to mention that uh, if you are working for an international organization though, and the work is remote, then you're not gonna get the international stipend because you're still in the US, you get the $4,000 instead of the $6,000. And as far as the OCS funded internships, those are really going to depend. It's, it's kind of a moving target, like Lindsay was saying, plan A, plan B, plan C. So the organizations, that's all up to them specifically. And they'll say in the posting, whether it's remote or hybrid or what they're open to. Um, I, my only like parting thought is there's so much information that has been thrown out. If anybody is feeling a little bit overwhelmed and not sure where to start, just make, a, make an appointment and talk with somebody that you that you feel like you could talk to that's on this call, like reach out to Lindsay or Robin. Everybody would love to help you get organized. Um, so so I think we're trying to make the point of don't procrastinate and don't worry too, but go ahead and get started. You know, just reach out to somebody and, and start by having a conversation and get yourself unstuck. Yeah, of course. Thanks, Mark. Um, okay, so then that will wrap up our event for the night. Thanks, everyone, for coming. Hannah, while we're waiting for questions to come in, one thing I do want to mention um, is this issue about December grads. If you're graduating in December, are you eligible for everything, nothing, some of the things? If you are a December grad, um, it will depend a little bit on the particular award that you're looking at with 
a lot of national awards, it's really whether your graduation date falls within a particular range. And so we should talk about the specifics of that award. For internal awards, there are very few that are class year specific, but there are these postgraduate, these Yale College postgraduate awards. And those have a deadline that is in February. And if you're a December grad, you can apply either the February before or the February after your December graduation, but not both. And that's generally gonna be the case if you have a, a Yale award that is class year specific, you have to kind of pick which cycle. You can't do both. Just wanted to mention that. Thanks, Lindsay.